service for Friday. Uh, we're actually uh, recording this on Wednesday and as you can hear probably the rain in the background but very refreshing rain after the heat. Um, so once again we welcome you but we'll start with um, a few words from Psalm 86 verse 6 to 8. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. So let us pray. Our strong and faithful God, we acknowledge that you are to be worshipped with reverence and awe. In the world that mocks you, so often debases your name and forgets you as its creator and saviour, we acknowledge you and praise you as our God, our creator, our saviour and Lord. Who are we to come into your presence? Who are we to call upon your name, Most High God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? We who think the world revolves around us, centres on our desires, on our needs and our wills. Yet you call us to bring our prayers and petitions to you. Lord, as we consider what we should be and ask that you would have your own way in our lives, Fill us with your Holy Spirit and make us fit vessels of your grace. And Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together in this way. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who feel alone, those who no longer feel your presence, those who feel guilty, because they have fallen short of the glory of God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will come to them, that they may receive you, and receive your grace into their lives. 
We pray those in our fellowship, Lord, who are sick at this time. We pray, dear Lord, for those who have received difficult news from doctors. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who, in our fellowship, who work in hospitals. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for the, the leaders of this church, that you will guide them in the coming days. We thank you, dear Lord, last Sunday we were able to meet together in the Lord's house. We are able to worship you. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give wisdom uh, to our leaders, dear Lord, in the right way to manage th this time that we'll be safe, that we will love our neighbour and, and not spread the virus. And yet, dear Lord, we may be able to gather together to worship you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord, we ask you to have your hand upon those who are in need and are struggling. Touch those who need healing in their bodies. Touch those who need healing in their marriages. Touch those who need healing in their homes. Touch those who need healing in this congregation at West Worthing. And Lord, for these needs and many more, we ask of your provision through the only name that gains acceptance before your throne of grace, the name of Jesus, our only mediator. Amen. Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, they labour in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. In vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. We're looking at um, Psalm 127 in these uh, Friday recordings. And um, last week we looked at the first part of Psalm 127, unless the Lord build a house, they labour in vain who build it. This week we're going to look at the second part, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Of course, the, uh, these two parts of the verse are, of course, linked together. Unless, unless the Lord builds a house, unless the Lord guards the city. The builders and the night watchmen labour and stay awake in vain unless the Lord is in it. Success in life uh, depends more than hard work, because hard work is important, uh, more than Honest endeavour, although honest endeavour is important. 
but God must bless our human endeavour. Unless the Lord is in it, we labour, we endeavour in vain. Um, this part of uh, Psalm 127 uh, speaks about watchmen. Well, watchmen in the Bible were guards responsible for protecting towns and military installations from surprise enemy attacks and potential dangers. Um, psalm 127 is a psalm of ascent. Uh, this was um, a, uh, uh, a number of psalms that were used uh, as the pilgrims went to Jerusalem for the big festivals. There would, they would see the, uh, the temple. And last week we reminded ourselves that unless the Lord is um, uh, in our work, in our building of the Lord's uh, work, uh, unless the Lord is in it, guiding and directing by his Holy Spirit, we're doing it in vain. They would look at the uh, magnificent house of God, the temple, and then they would also notice the watchmen on the towers and on the uh, top of the walls in Jerusalem, guarding again. And we're reminded here that the, they need to do it the Lord's way and the, in the Lord's strength. Uh, night watchmen would often be tempted to fall asleep uh, however much we um if we're doing a night shift um uh, from experience although you might have to sleep in the day at night you're extremely tired and um you're very tempted uh, to fall asleep well the psalmist is saying unless the lord is in it unless the lord is guiding you uh, might as well sleep because it, it will uh, be of no effect. They were disobedient and God's judgment came upon the city as it did in a number of times. Then the watchmen were of no effect. They couldn't guard the city. And so they are staying awake in vain. Ancient Israeli cities often stationed watchmen on these high walls. Their job was to keep watch and warn the people of impending threats. The Hebrew word watchman means one who looks out, one who spies, or one who watches. And there are many references to watchmen who kept an eye on the physical threats in the Bible. But also the Bible refers to watchmen in a spiritual sense. God appointed prophets as spiritual watchmen over the souls of the people. Ezekiel 33, 7 says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. The prophet's job as watchman was to urge God's people to live faithfully and warn them of the perils involved in falling away from the Lord and doing evil. As watchmen, the prophets were also called to warn wicked people of judgment and destruction that would come their way unless they turned from their evil ways. And Israel's spiritual watchmen 
bore an awesome, heavy responsibility before the Lord. If a prophet failed to warn others of God had appointed him to do, his own life was in danger and would be held accountable for the people's sin. A watchman who was blind or disobedient to the Lord's word let the people he was called to protect open to danger and suffering. So obedience is the only course of action for a true watchman. Go back to Ezekiel again. Ezekiel 33, 9. But if you warn the wicked person to turn from their ways and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. So a role of a watchman continues in the New Testament in the form of church leaders. And they have responsibility to bring the word of God to the people. But there is an, another sense in which um, uh, we must think about watchmen. Not just leaders, but all believers should be watchmen. And I like to uh, just look at two senses in which we are to be, we are to watch. Jesus told his disciples to watch and pray so that they will not fall into temptation. We read about this in Mark chapter 14, verse 38. Jesus was in Gethsemane and he was. Um, uh, praying to his father and the disciples uh, in this most intense of moments were asleep and Jesus says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak in order that we don't fall into temptation we are to watch and we are to pray that we don't fall into temptation. We should also be watchful concerning our Lord's return. The biblical approach to the future involves prayer and preparation more than predicting and planning. Um, we're all tempted to get very excited about the Lord's return, and I'm excited about the Lord's return. Um, Moody once said, um, as he was, uh, uh, while he was preaching, he reminded himself that before he preaches again, Christ might return uh, in the second coming. Of course, the, um, you know, the second coming is so important. But it, um, rather than prediction and planning, most important is prayer and preparation. Augustine said, He who loves the coming of the Lord is not he who affirms it far off, nor is it he who says it is near, it is he who, whether it is far or near, awaits it with sincere faith, steadfast hope and fervent love. So the biblical truth is this, God does the planning, he only knows when the Lord is going to return, we do the pre preparing. And we are to watch and pray. Prayer, preparing involves calling 
upon the Lord, coming to God in relationship, praying and seeking the Lord with all your heart. And Jesus teaches people about living and growing in their relationship with the Lord. We are to know Jesus. Do we really know Jesus as a personal relationship that we have with him? I um, know a lot about uh, uh, famous rugby players. Uh, I follow a club side and I know the ins and outs of who's playing and not playing. And some of them, I, I know quite a lot about them uh, because I see them on Facebook and I read about them in the papers and I listen uh, and I watch the uh, TV programs and I see them playing. I know a lot about them, but I don't really know them. I don't know them personally. When people speak about knowing Jesus, they refer to having a relationship with him. And being a Christian is more than knowing about Jesus. Being a Christian is knowing him personally. And Jesus spoke of the need to know the Saviour when he prayed. And in John 17, 3 it says, This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. We prepare ourselves by knowing Jesus personally. We prepare ourselves for his return by knowing Jesus personally. So how do we know Jesus? Romans 8, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You must believe that Jesus is Lord and that he has risen from the dead. The reason he died was to pay for our sin on the cross. And when you trust in Christ, you receive Jesus and become part of of his family. In addition, John 3.16 says that you have been given eternal life. And so we prepare ourselves for Christ's return knowing that when he comes we shall be found not guilty, not in our own righteousness, but through the righteousness of Christ who died for us on the cross. He is our substitute. He, his precious blood, has covered our sin. The life includes eternity with Christ in heaven and is available to those who trust and believe in Christ. One last scripture. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 explains how salvation is a result of God's goodness, his grace, his wonderful grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God not a result of works, 
so that no one may boast. Knowing Jesus in salvation is not based on what we do. When God quickens your heart, knowing Jesus starts with faith in him and our continual relationship with him is always rooted in faith. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We thank you, dear Lord, for the moment, as believers, you quickened our hearts, that quickening ray that came into our hearts, that we were born again, we were regenerated, by the work of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, dear Lord, that through the preaching of the gospel, that saving work for eternal, for eternal life, we trusted and believed. You gave us the ability to trust and believe those things. And Lord, as we think about you coming back, the Lord Jesus coming back in majesty. We pray, dear Lord, that we may be prepared for his return, that we may rejoice as we see him and as we meet him and as we rejoice in him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.